Welcome to CS Guitars, the science of loud. One of the benefits of this, for lack of a better word, job that I do is that I can request equipment that I've always wanted to try and even get paid to do so. There are a couple of orange amplifiers that I've only known by reputation until now, but what a reputation they have. So I demanded the orange ship them out to me on loan so I can get a chance to play around with them and decide whether or not they should have a permanent place in my palace of guitar decadence. The first of these is the Rocker Verb 50, an absolute backbreaker of an amplifier, as any roadie will tell you. The Rocker Verb name is often muttered alongside other iconic rock amplifiers, but I was surprised to discover just how recent a classic this is, with the Mark I being introduced in 2004. This Mark III is obviously the third incarnation of the design, tweaking the sound and response based on feedback from some of the amplifier's high-profile users. This features a dedicated clean channel and a distortion channel championed by some of rock and metal's filthiest bands. Inbuilt spring reverb and an attenuator so you can really drive this while keeping the loudness at reasonable stage volume. A pair of EL34 power valves provide the Class AB amplification and the custom transformers responsible for the amplifier's back crippling weight help define the low end response. As this was originally the first real high gain amplifier in the Orange lineup, it's no surprise that some of rock and metal's finest guitarists have gravitated towards the sound. Slipknot, Skindred, Sepultura, Orianti, Korn, Wishbone Ash, all the way down to emo legends My Chemical Romance have used the Rocker Verb amps in their lineup. If I want big, filthy distortion sounds, I'm in good company with this amplifier. Now, this being a gain appreciation video, I'm not going to really focus on that clean channel. It's not what we're here for. Besides that, I kind of prefer the clean sounds that one can get from the distortion channel with the gain low. It's got a different texture and a sparkle that I just kind of prefer. Also, this helps demonstrate the range the distortion channel on this amplifier has, going from pushed cleans right the way through to crippling thick distortion, and with the aid of a screamer type pedal out front, can absolutely tighten up for the filthiest metal genres you can imagine. This being an orange amplifier, the gain structure isn't the smooth, focused sound you'd expect from the likes of a 6505 or an SLO. This is hairier and girthier with a lot going on in the lows and mids. I'm pairing this with the matching vertical 212 open back cabinet loaded with Neo cream backs, an absolutely incredible sounding cabinet and I can see why Orange were so insistent that I take one of these as well. And I'm capturing that sound with Lewitt microphones, the 440 dynamic and condenser. <laughs> Thank you. 
amplifier on its own the distortion is nice and thick. There's a darkness there that summons up all my low string chugging energy. Throwing on the Maxon Apex 808 everything gets tighter and more aggressive, focusing the filth into a metal weapon, sounding massive for the drop tunings and the Fishman Fluence pickups. On the lighter end of the scale, I loved what it was doing with the PRS SE Piezo. Now, it may not be your first choice to pair a hollow body guitar with the rocker verb, but it gave some very beautiful results and made full use of that lush, drowning spring reverb. This is a pretty no-nonsense, valve-powered filth box, but with the inclusion of the effects loop, the spring reverb and the attenuator, it's a very practical one if you have the muscles to lift it. 50 watts is absolutely more than enough to be loud and have the headroom you'll need and it's switchable down to 25 watts and the attenuator can bring the loudness under control even further for small shows and practice. I liked it paired with this cabinet as well. The open back design gave a little bit extra in the room. It sounds and feels like a big rock amplifier and it's easy to see why it's gained such a lofty reputation in such a relatively short period of time. But will I like the AD30 more? You'll have to tune into the next video to find out. While I've still got some thinking to do on this, if what you've heard here has made up your mind and you want to snag a rocker verb for yourself, then the links are in the description below. Now, if you've made it all the way to the end of this video and didn't bail out during the guitar playing like a total roaster, then you get to know about the giveaway that the others will know nothing about. That's the way we reward loyalty here at CS Guitars. You could win this Orange Crush Mini. It's a tiny little 3 watt battery powered practice amplifier with a built in tuner, headphone output and impressively an 8 ohm cabinet output. That's something you don't see very often on tiny little amplifiers like this. Orange have recognised that the bottleneck of amplifiers of this size is the tiny little speaker which is never going to sound as good as a roaring full stack. But when you connect this tiny amplifier to a bigger cabinet, you can get some incredibly good sounds. Have a listen. Pretty sweet, right? Not only am I giving away this, but I'll also be giving away a set of orange branded earbuds should you want to practice in silence. How do you enter the giveaway? Well, all you need to do is join the CS Guitars Discord. There's a discussion in there entitled Competitions, and all the instructions you need will be pinned to the top of that thread. Don't forget to click all the buttons you're supposed to to make this video viable to the ever changing whims of the YouTube algorithm. That's all for now. Keep it loud and stay safe. Insert outro gag here.